guys, Dr. Darwin Lim, a board certified dermatologist. Today we'll be talking about chemical peels, my favorite chemical peels, and um, how I perceive what the best value chemical peel is, yeah? So, uh, just as a background, I do a lot of chemical peels, everything from uh, glycolic acid, salicylic acid, um, all the way up to uh, retinoic acid, high concentration, anywhere between 0.5 to 4% um, retinoic acid. Uh, together with TCA, everything from 30%, 35% uh, with Jesna, all the way to 100%, together with uh, focal um, phenol croton oil peels, yeah? So, look, the way I look at chemical peels is that they are very undervalued. Um, I peel every day, like, not peel physically, but I actually uh, perform chemical peels every day, uh, at least probably about three or four peels a day. Uh, that's in the event of lasers as well, because Look, lasers have the advantage, uh, but certainly chemical peels, especially in the context of superficial peels, can be a little bit more cost effective uh, depending on your uh, skin condition. So just as a background, uh, if we talk about peels, superficial peels, so today I'll be talking mainly about superficial peels, uh, not really about the medium or the deep peels, which I do. So superficial peels basically peel the upper part of your skin, yeah, the stratum corneum, all the way down to your epidermis, um, but not down past your basement membrane, so it doesn't actually go down to your dermis. So the ones that go down to your dermis, like I mentioned, uh, include your higher strength uh, trichloroacetic acid peels, which is the TCA peels, the um, combination between uh, uh, phenol as well as uh, croton oil, which is the deep peel, uh, and as well as the Jesna uh, together with the TCA peel. So the superficial peels are mainly alpha hydroxy acid peels. So we call them uh, glycolic, lactic, mandelic, citric, uh, beta hydroxy acid, that's uh, only one, the salicylic acid. Um, and then last of all, the retinoid peels, which is your retinoic acid. Now, where I look at this is that it depends on your concern. So if you have acne, for example, um, the standout peel, yes, you can use alpha hydroxy acid, but the standout peel is usually a salicylic acid peel. Generally speaking, um, most practitioners use anywhere between a 10%, uh, 10 15%, can go up to 20 and even 30% salicylic acid. So you can buy yourself a salicylic acid wash. That's a little bit different because that's only 2% salicylic acid as a wash. Well, the salicylic acid peel, like I said, starts at least five times higher the concentration. Uh, and that's a left-on peel. So we don't neutralize salicylic acid. Salicylic acid is self-neutralizing. And you have this pseudo-frost, uh, especially for your comedones, your blackheads. You just get this nice white pseudo-frost, they call it. Now, um, in the context of salicylic acid, when is it actually more useful compared to other peels? The mainstay is acne, yeah? So acne and oily skin, especially acne. You can extend it to um, oily skin. Uh, you can extend it to enlarged pores as well. So salicylic acid is a beta hydroxy acid. Uh, it is advantageous compared to alpha hydroxy acids because sal acid is actually fat soluble. So it's lipid soluble and it also has very powerful anti-inflammatory properties. So. If you've got acne, that's probably the one you should go for, yeah? But be guided by your um, skincare physician, your skincare expert slash aesthetician uh, slash dermal therapist, uh, because they would know how to apply uh, their range of peels uh, in the context of your skin. So moving on, alpha hydroxy acids. So alpha hydroxy acids, like I said, uh, include glycolic acid, lactic, uh, citric, mandelic. Now, these acids, unlike uh, beta hydroxy acids, need to be neutralize so especially in the context of uh, clinical peels uh, because with these they are low ph uh, peels yeah which means um uh, the ph is is as, well as you know low ph is acidic but it's more acidic compared to your uh, normal ahas which you buy uh, over the counter so with these peels, um, the indication is basically, uh, it's broad. So you can use them for blackheads, you can use them for whiteheads, you can use them for acne. They're not great for acne, but you still can use them. It can cause too much irritation. So that's why I say, you know, it's best to go for BHAs in the context of uh, congested skin and acne prone skin. So AHAs, my indication basically is generalized rejuvenation. For some, so someone who's got some pigment, uh, for example, melasma, uh, AHA peels, can be 
beneficial. So apart from pigment, it can actually help with sun damage. So things like uh, sunspots, so like keratosis, uh, sun pigmentation, wrinkles uh, as well, fine wrinkles, uh, as well as um, freckles. Yeah, so just generalized pigmentation. So it's a good general lunchtime peel. Now, the disadvantage of um, AHAs is that we need to use a step up. We need to start low. We need to start low at something like 10%, 15%. Um, most of the time we normally start about 20% and then you step up to 35% then 50% and generally speaking most of us go the maximum we normally go to is 70% uh, AHA which is glycolic acid. Now these peels are a little bit tricky because you do need to neutralize them uh, and you need to be very particular uh, in regards to uh, the peel itself which means you've got to time it, you need to watch it, so you need to watch your skin to make sure that it reacts okay, you don't have too much redness or, or erythema, and not too much irritation or even swelling. Uh, in certain areas, um, for example, around your nose area, uh, need to be protected with Vaseline. But the main thing is that they do need to be neutralized. So do I advise AHA peels at home uh, at that concentration? The answer is no. Uh, in fact, most of the bad side effects I see uh, actually from from AHA peels. I'm not joking. You know, it, it's because they need neutralization. And if you're a little bit careless and you forget to neutralize uh, certain areas, you'll know it because you'll have a uh, chemical peel burn. So AHA is great peels uh, if you know what you're doing. The advantage of AHA is, uh, if I haven't mentioned before, is it actually stimulates collagen. So high strength AHAs, and I've got, I should find them, yeah, I should get some amazing before and afters from 10, 15 years ago when we're using um, AHA peels quite a fair bit. Uh, and they do actually help with collagen stimulation and uh, some patients get an amazing uh, anti-wrinkle effect just from lunchtime peels. Yeah, so it's certainly a peel which should not be, uh, I guess, uh, forgotten. Okay, moving on. Uh, I, this, is, this is what my, I believe, yeah. If you're having general skin concerns, right? So things like, uh, like I mentioned, fine lines, fine wrinkles, uh, generalized redo, some mild photo damage. Probably the peel I would go for um, would be the uh, retinoic acid peels, yeah? So just to give you an indication, uh, retinol, so you can buy yourself over-the-counter retinol, uh, needs to be converted to retinoic acid. You can buy yourself um, also uh, tretinoin, yeah? Which is your Steve Olay, your, your um, different, and those ones, uh, those formulations or those prescriptions, generally speaking, they start at 0 0.025 and they go up to 0 0.1 concentration. Now, the retinoic acid peels that we use as, as specialists usually start at 1%. So they're 10 times uh, stronger than the strongest uh, retinoic acid prescription. And that's usually about 100 times stronger than uh, over-the-counter retinol and then we can actually go up to 4%. So if you look at the math, it's anywhere between 400 to 800 times stronger than your over-the-counter retinols which you, which you buy. So that's why I like um, uh, retinoic acid peels. The good side about retinoic acid peels as well is that for patients who actually like peeling, uh, where you actually have your skin flake off and you go, wow, that's actually done something to my skin they can be a very good option uh, because you don't get that kind of peeling with, well, you should not get the kind of peeling with the alpha hydroxy acid peels. So for people who like, like peeling, uh, certainly a retinoic acid peel would be, uh, would be the way, way to go. The other thing as well, it is uh, more cost effective in the sense that we, in the absence of contraindication, for example, sensitive skin, uh, someone's got a history of dermatitis, eczema, seb seborrheic dermatitis or rosacea, we don't need to start slow. So we can actually start at something sensible like a 2%. Uh, for patients who've got resistant skin, we can easily go up to 4%. You can do a um, acetone clean or acetone scrub beforehand, a physical exfoliator, something like, um, just to give an example, a Clarisonic, or you can easily prime your skin. Yeah, so prime your skin mean, means to use your alpha hydroxy acids as a peel, but you can use it as an over-the-counter um, nightly application for maybe a week beforehand that compacts your australian corneum it increases permeability it potentiates the peel which means you will get a, a super strength uh, four percent peel and because we don't need to step up unlike alpha hydroxy acids 
chances are you probably need fewer peels for the endpoint. Yeah, so instead of having, let's say, uh, five or six AHA peels, you might go for two or three uh, retinoic acid peels and get to the endpoint of which you can maintain. Um, just out there, that's my peel of choice for me personally, because I'm a lazy ass guy. So it's, it's, it's instead of me having, you know, a huge amount of um, skincare products or skincare procedures, every two months, three months, I basically use my Clarisonic, um, give my skin a really good scrub, um, time it right. So I put on the peel, let's say, give you an example, um, after work at five o'clock, I wash it off at 10, 11 o'clock at night. I do it on a Thursday. I get a delayed peeling usually on the Saturday. So if I'm working the Saturday, you see me a little bit flaky, that's more than likely I've had that peel. Um, and then I peel on the Sunday. I'm usually off on the Monday half day. Uh, and I'm right back on work on Tuesday. So if you time it right, um, it's actually a very good peel. It's a very cost efficient and time efficient peel as well because you leave it um, on for, like I said, anywhere between four hours all the way up to 12 hours. So you're not there at the office or, or, or at the spa or wherever you go. Uh, you actually, well, you're there because they put it on and then after that, um, you go back home and you wash it off. So um, a caution with that peel, um, patients, like I said, with rosacea, sensitive skin, um, probably not a good idea for peeling. That's when I say, look, you know, laser, laser resurfacing or Q-switch lasers or Pico lasers, in the dermal toning um, uh, setting is actually better because you're putting less chemicals and hence less irritation to your skin. So once again, horses for courses. courses. I really like my lasers. Um, I mean, that's what I do. But uh, chemical peels, I think, um, you know, it's, it's funny, yeah? Because if, if you look at 10, 15 years ago, um, before the mainstream lasers came in, you know, slash microneedling and all the other um, skin procedures, Chemical peels were, I guess, the the in at that stage. Um, they call it lunchtime peels, yeah, because you basically have this peel at your lunchtime at your dermatology office or your physician's office, and that's it. You know, you wear a makeup in your right. Uh, so that's a probably a very common occurrence. Yeah, 15 years ago, then there was an event of lasers. So things like Fraxel laser, Clear and Brilliant, uh, Pearl laser, all of these other fractional resurfacing techniques and peels went down. But nowadays, I think peels are on the way up because there's newer formulations. Um, and unlike lasers, where you know a practice has got to spend literally you know, upwards of a quarter of a million to two, three million in regards to the equipment, if they have multiple lasers. Um, the upside of chemical peels is that the consumables are minimal. So we're basically looking at the peel solution. We're looking at um, a cooling agent, for example, a Zimmer cooler or a fan, um, and you know, a couple of brushes, a couple of gauze squares, a couple of containers, and that's it. So that's why I think they're, they're a good option, especially nowadays in this, um, I guess, environment here, yeah? because when we are looking at that cost savings, um, and affordability of treatments, chemical peels should not be discounted, yeah? As in discounted, as in not thought about, not discounted, discounted. They may be, but anyway, I digress. Guys, I hope you liked that video. It's a very spontaneous one. Um, look, I'll be doing more videos on, I guess, affordable treatments, home treatments, what I think works really well, uh, what I think is bang for bucks uh, for patients out there. Um, guys, please like, comment, share. Um, Really like to know what you want me to talk about in the upcoming weeks uh, in for 2020. I'll see you uh, next week. Bye for now.